There's two things that I'm passionate about, Newfoundland and immigration. The YouTube channel that I've created here, I mean, you can obviously see lots of videos and discussions about Newfoundland. You can see interviews with people who have moved to Newfoundland from other places. And I try to remove myself from those to let the people who have actually gone through the process of immigrating to Newfoundland share their story. The channel's small and it's growing and I'm really proud of where it's at right now, but it's still definitely a small channel. So. I don't get a lot of interaction in the comments section. You know, it's it's improving, it's definitely getting better. But I do my best to respond to any comments that appear. I actually created a video a couple months ago now called Let's Talk About Immigration in Newfoundland. And I'm really happy to say that it actually did lead to a little bit of a discussion. There was some good comments that were posted after the video went live. And there actually was a discussion where people had different viewpoints on immigration and the role it plays in Newfoundland now and in the future. And I'm really happy that that happened. I'm really proud that there's some kind of discussion that stems from my videos. When I show the, the pretty little outports of Newfoundland and talk about my, my trips through them, or if I introduce you to somebody who came to Newfoundland from another country who happens to be doing something cool, starting a cool business, some kind of artist, that's the joy that I get from this channel. And that's what I hope to be able to do for a long time to come. The other day, however, I received a comment that just wasn't useful. It wasn't insightful. I mean, frankly, it was a dark comment. And, it was written in such a way that's frustrating because it's just the type of ignorant comment that doesn't deserve to be dissected and answered, but in a sense, it is the inspiration behind this video. So I will actually read the comment and then explain kind of how the immigration process works in Canada and how it pertains to Newfoundland and then talk about a few other things related to the comment. I don't know if the person who wrote it is from Newfoundland, but they specifically mentioned that they're Canadian. People still have this mindset, so I'm not going to delete the comment. I did quickly respond to it in the comment section, but I actually want to leave it up just so people can see as a frame of reference, this mindset is still prevalent in Canada. Again, the, the video is called Let's Talk About Immigration in Newfoundland. So I actually invited the comment, just kind of disappointed that this is the type of comment that someone felt the need to to put out there. My stance on this is culture-based. I feel with immigration, you need similar societies to mix, not the opposite. If we immigrated people from Ireland, that'd be perfect because they're similar to us culturally. But the way Canada does it makes no sense. It's like if China or Nigeria chose to mass immigrated Americans or even fellow Canadians, for example, that'd be stupid. But on the west side of the world, we're forced into situations like that and it only causes hate and division because you're forcing two opposites together which weren't meant to be together. And they made to where you're the bad guy for calling this truth out. That's the comment exactly as it was written. I'm not going to dissect every line of that, but I'm going to pick out a couple of things and, and kind of veer out from it. To start, it's easy. This guy or girl, I don't know, has exposed their truth. Not the truth, their truth. Just because someone says something doesn't make it the truth. Just because you believe it doesn't make it the truth. They use the word forced a couple of times. We're forced to live like this in the West because the government's immigration policy doesn't make sense. And that's forcing us to, to feel hatred and division. Nobody's forcing anybody to do anything. Canada's immigration system is not perfect by any means, but it is considered by many countries to be a model for the world to follow. Now there's constant evolution, constant new programs and changes to existing programs, and the system is improving. In my estimation, it has a long way to go, but it's working towards getting to a good place. The idea that Canada is just picking and choosing people from other countries to spice up its cultural mosaic is just wrong. People have to express their own interests and they go through a process that is rigorous, that is expensive, that is time consuming. Nobody's forcing anything on anybody. I don't understand that concept. It, it shows that you don't understand the process. Let me differentiate two very important concepts, an immigrant and a refugee. Someone who chooses to immigrate to a country is typically going to do so through an economic stream or there's a family reunification aspect. The other side of this is the 
situation of refugees. Canada does have a more active role in choosing who to sponsor as refugees. Even within that statement, that's not the whole truth because there's private organizations and families that can choose to sponsor people in need as well. But what is a refugee? A refugee is somebody who is able to prove that they need Canada's protection. Again, not an easy process. Even within the categories of immigrant or refugee, there's another gray area of temporary residents who technically are not immigrants. Now, who are temporary residents? International students, temporary foreign workers, people that come to Canada on a work permit. There are certain business resources or, or language and different settlement type of resources that are just not available because they're technically not immigrants. The idea that choosing immigrants from Ireland is favorable to choosing immigrants from Nigeria or China. It was official immigration policy in Canada and, and Newfoundland specifically for 150 years. Newfoundland's culture is definitely shaped by Ireland, but in a big way. People from Ireland, people from England, from Scotland, they're, they're still coming to Canada. The difference is people from China and Nigeria are no longer being excluded from coming to Canada. There were justifications thrown around about people from Africa can adjust to our climate. That was the official argument that government made to exclude people from Africa. Canadian culture has changed completely in my lifetime. I'm not even that old. The makeup of Canada has changed so much over the last 50, 60 years, since the late 60s. We can have discussions about the specific policies and regulations that are in place that support immigration in Canada and attraction and retention of people from around the world, where we're focusing our efforts, all of these types of things. These are discussions to be had. A discussion that isn't necessary is let's focus on Irish immigrants and forget about Nigerian or Chinese immigrants because they're so different from us. This was the official immigration policy of Canada for a long time. It led to the MS St. Louis. It led to the Chinese head tax. It led to the Komagatu Maru. It led to a lot of problems over the years. And a lot of these are a long time ago, but this comment posted on my YouTube channel two days ago show that these ideas are still prevalent in Canada today. I love when people come to Canada from Ireland. Ireland is awesome. That's not the point. Nothing's changing with that. People are as allowed in 2023 to come to Canada from Ireland as they were in 1823. The change is that people from Africa and from Asia that were formally excluded from immigrating to Canada are no longer excluded. There's still a process to follow to make an immigration application work, but there is an application process. And if people want to go through that process, they're free to do that on their own. You talk about hate and division. The only hate and division that has come up is from your comment. What is bothering you so much about this? why you're so mad, why you have so much hate, and why you feel so much division. Because it isn't the people from Nigeria that are moving here that are hateful and divisive. And the comment is kind of nonsense, really, but it's worth highlighting because it is a mindset that exists.